Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order when you check out Row One Brand's Vintage Sports Pictorium Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. If he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL helmet poster. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. In part two of the Lee James story, we'll focus on Lee's big day at the Olympics. Lee hoped to become just the second American lifter to earn a medal since the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City when super heavyweight Joe Dube won the bronze medal. No American weightlifter had medals at the 1972 Olympics in Munich. Lee arrived at the Olympic Village about a week before the competition. Lee remembers it clearly. Although I was experiencing some pain in my right knee, I was able to snatch 358 pounds in the training hall four days before the competition. I felt ready and confident, but I had to hold myself back a little bit in training because my adrenaline was sky high. I knew I needed to save some of it for the competition. At 22 years old, Lee was the youngest of the 19 competitors. The main competitors were David Riegert of the Soviet Union, who was the heavy favorite, Atanas Shapov of Bulgaria, and Lee's teammate Phil Gopalda. All three men were very proficient in the clean and jerk. Lee knew he had to do well in the snatch to have a chance at meddling. Riegert missed his opening snatch attempt, but made his next two and finished with 170 kilograms, 375 pounds. Lee, on the other hand, made all three of his lifts and finished with 165 kilograms, 364 pounds. Lee's 165 kilogram snatch was an Olympic record until Riegert snatched 170 just a few minutes later. Shapov made only his opening attempt at 155 kilos, 342 pounds. Grapaldi made his first two attempts, but missed his third, finishing with 150 kilos, 330 pounds. The lifter predicted to win the silver medal. Serhai Polterowski of the Soviet Union failed on all three attempts in the snatch thereby eliminating himself from the competition. Lee and Mikhail Brolyet of Switzerland were in the spot that Polteratsky had vacated, dead even for second place, going into the clean and jerk portion of the competition. But then Lee put himself in jeopardy of not meddling when he missed his first clean and jerk attempt with 190 kilos, 419 pounds. Thankfully, he came back strong to make it on his second attempt, and that's when things got interesting. U.S. head coach Tommy Kono wanted Lee to take 195 kilograms, 430 pounds, for his third attempt, but Lee's coach, Dick Smith, felt that Lee needed 197.5 kilograms to stay in metal contention. It would be the most weight Lee had ever attempted in the clean and jerk. Kono relented and gave Lee the okay to take the 197 and a half. The last thing I remember that day, Lee recalls, is Smitty saying to me as I walked out to the platform, you need to be successful in this lift, Lee. If you miss it, you'll not only lose your chance for a medal, but I'll be in big trouble with Coach Kono. I felt confident that I could lift it, said Lee, 
and thankfully I did. Now all Lee could do was wait and see what the others were capable of lifting. The waiting was nerve-wracking. I was hopeful that I would at least win a bronze medal. Even if I tied for third, it would go in my favor because the tiebreaker would go to the man with a lighter body weight. I was much lighter than the others. Finally, the waiting was over. Berliet of Switzerland missed all three of his attempts with 197 and a half kilos, eliminating himself from medal contention. Soviet lifter David Rieger made two of three lifts in the clean and jerk, finishing with 212 and a half kilos. The Bulgarian Shapov made two of three, finishing with 205. American Phil Gapaldi also made two of three, finishing with 205. After adding the two lifts together, the final results were as follows. First place, David Rieger, USSR, 382 and a half kilos. Second place, Lee James, USA, 362 and a half kilos. Third place, Atana Shapov, Bulgaria, 360 kilos. Fourth place went to Phil Grapaldi, USA, 355 kilos. Lee James had done it. He had won the silver medal for Team USA. The patriotic Lee was proud to have won a medal for his country. Here is Lee's response when I asked how it felt. I always believed that God had a destiny in mind for me. As I continued lifting and getting stronger, I began to think that this was the direction God was sending me in. I always prayed for the strength to push harder and harder. I felt incredibly blessed to have won the silver medal. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.